You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Pretty Little Liars After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Pretty Little Liars After Show. Hi, welcome back to another Pretty Little Liars After Show. We are in Season 5, Episode 4, Thrown from the Ride. I am your host, Kelly, and joining me tonight... Hi, everyone. It's Stephanie Wenger. And we, Allie's back at school. Oh, well, not yet. She's deciding she's, whether she wants to go back to yeah, school. Yeah, she's like on that cliff, <laughs> deciding whether she wants to re-enter Rosewood craziness. And Spencer thinks her dad is a murderer. Uh, yeah. I mean, that seemed like a little bit of a jump. I know we talked about in previous episodes that parents were always suspicious of the parents and the older generation mm-hmm. on this show. But I wasn't sure that I went from Spencer's dad being creepy to full-on murder. I don't know if that was a jump that I was ready to make. What do you think about the way Spencer's mom has been was acting in the beginning of the episode, sleeping downstairs? She's obsessed with the backyard, rightfully so, obsessed with the backyard. Oh, I mean, they found I mean, they found a dead body buried in the backyard. So she, the police have been have had it the crime you know, as a crime scene, digging and yeah, examining I mean, I and, and all that stuff. Any mother, I mean, I completely understand that that she would go crazy over that and be obsessed with the backyard. Found it a little interesting that she didn't have. I feel like a crime scene would last longer than a week or two in that scenario. Like, that she wouldn't... Maybe it's not a crime scene. It's just where they found this body. But they already were, like, raking up the yard and, like, doing yard work. And I was just like, oh, so we're really just going there and taking care of the yard very, very quickly. <laughs> yeah, and then... Well, it was interesting, too. And, and you know, jumping ahead a little bit, but they had... Uh, Andrew came over and and helped fix the yard, but then the police came back. So there's definitely something weird going on with that story. It doesn't seem to make sense. If it was if it was a crime scene and the police were still investigating it, it doesn't seem like they would be able to kind of put the yard back together. Right. With you know, so there's definitely something sketchy going on with Spencer's dad. But one revelation that we did find out is that the story of Jessica thinking that Spencer had something to do with Allie's murder slash disappearance is true, that she did relay that information to her parents, well, at least to her dad. Yeah, I mean, it was most clear tonight. I feel like we've kind of had that, we've bounced around that idea. Spencer mm-hmm. definitely knew something was going on, that some that or she wasn't even sure of her own involvement in it because of her past like, medication use. Right. So just hopped up on pills, can't remember what happened. Right, exactly. <laughs> so she's trying to figure out what was happening, and we've kind of seen that all season. Mm-hmm. And then finally tonight, she seemed really upset by the fact that this woman was blaming her, and she doesn't think she's responsible. Right, and to find out that it was still, she was going to frame her, or at least blame her, because we know, yes, Allie is alive, she wasn't killed she was hurt we still don't really know what really happened to her as she's sticking to her kidnap story but there was a body in her grave so somebody did die and it seems that jessica was going to kind of try to put that all on spencer that seems to be one of the biggest questions of season five though is Mm -hmm. who is in that grave and Mm -hmm. and pointing the finger at spencer alone is is such a huge monumental like life-changing thing if you still think about it, all these girls are in high school and I know. it seems like they've been in high school forever it's a long four years it is we were actually talking <laughs> about this last week on the show that like what happens next are they going to go to college like or are we just we're stuck in in you know <laughs> there in the town yeah and i don't know it's 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 pretty crazy but considering that at spencer's state of mind when all of that did happen i mean is there a possibility that there could have been someone that came along after she thought she hit Allie? And, you know, maybe, I mean, I was reading some comments and theories and stuff online where people thought that there was going to be someone that did have a twin, but it wasn't going to be Allie. Hmm. And what what if 
a Spencer did hurt someone and doesn't remember. I was thinking, did she... That's really off the wall. I'm just throwing it out there. I know. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a really interesting thought. Mm -hmm. But I feel like more along the line, it's not so much her twin. I mean, you can totally correct me out there on Twitter Mm -hmm. and and tell me it totally is her twin. Mm -hmm. But I think that maybe she she did something to Allie or the person who died, what Mm -hmm. have you. But someone else was also involved. I don't think this is an act that Spencer did on her own, even if no. she was hopped up on what have you. Well, and especially the way that Melissa is acting as well. And obviously Melissa and, and her dad have a secret and they know a lot more than even, well, obviously than Spencer does. So I'm wondering if if it, they're, they're trying to cover up something for her or if Melissa did something thinking she was protecting her and it just kind of got out of hand. Yeah, I don't I don't know. It just feels like something happened that night. Like that's what I'm waiting most for I think on this show is that that flashback that we actually see what happens. I mm-hmm. think one of us last week or the week before mentioned that it's going to be that final episode. Right. We're just going to be like <laughs> all the answers all at once. This is amazing. <laughs> well, we got a motive for yeah. Jessica's death. I mean, which we already kind of knew anyway, but it's it seems that if we go with the theory that Spencer's dad was the person that actually did hurt Jessica that it was to protect his daughter. Yeah, I mean, that's what he seems his bottom line, good or clearly bad tonight, Mm -hmm. um, is protecting his family. Mm -hmm. He wants to protect his wife, protect his daughter, and he's doing it in a what appears to be a really terrible way. We never know on Pretty Little Liars, but Mm -hmm. from the information we have right now, seems like he's not on the up and up. But... Do you think he really sent her to a spa, or did he send her to Radley for a couple of days? See, that's... <laughs> there's no spa where you can just be like, oh, I'm dropping her off. <laughs> it works. So, I don't know. I feel like there's something larger to that story. Is it rehab? Is it Radley? What's going on? There's there's something else there. And we saw that there are pills that are for her dad mm-hmm. as well tonight. Yeah, the high blood pressure pills, I believe it was. Yeah, so is that a stress thing? Do you think that he's taking those because he's stressed with all the lies? or? No, I think he simply just has high blood pressure. Oh, okay. It's just kind of something that, that some people have. I mean, my mom has high blood pressure. It's it's, it's kind of it's, yeah. it's a thing. And from what they got, we got from Allie, her mom actually had low blood pressure. And the medication she was taking was for low blood pressure, so her pills got switched. Right. And so she ended up taking what he, the same actual medication that he takes, hence where Spencer thinks that at first when she hears that it was high blood pressure pill, or her pills, the pills got mixed up mm-hmm. and not rat poison, then oh. she was relieved. She feels that sense of relief. It wasn't yeah. my dad. Yeah. But then she finds the pills in the cabinet that were exactly what was found in Jessica's blood in her toxicology report, which were the high blood pressure pills that stopped her heart. So, yeah. So back again, it's, and because high, you know, high blood pressure is a kind of a common thing, it could be a coincidence, but not very many things are. No, I so. mean, that's not the way I completely agree in a real world scenario. Yeah. Maybe, co- maybe. a coincidence is possible, but In Pretty Little Liars world, especially when you get the close-up of the pill bottle, not Mm. a coincidence. Right. But then, also, it just seems too easy to point all fingers there. And we know from this show, they always want you to lead somewhere, but then it takes you into a whole different turn. Oh, I I don't think anyone on this show is solely responsible for Mm -hmm. any act that is blamed on them like <laughs> right now we can point all the fingers we want at spencer's father but yeah. i mean we can't forget that ren is still a doctor so it he's is got true. access to all kinds of pills i know you really <laughs> feel like it's all coming from radley <laughs> I, just, I really think it is there's something not right with that place everybody spends too much time there well it's just crazy to me that we so many of the characters have have visited there i feel like I this show has to have it kind of is like their spa it's not okay yeah it's not okay it's not not a day spa let's be honest no. here well let's let's talk about Allie because I feel like her character has really been pretty interesting these last few couple of episodes pretty fragile and and very different from what we've seen her since this series started just I mean she we actually I mean she's been crying a lot and really emotional and do you think that that's genuine that's a great question I 
I don't know if it's it's genuine. I don't know if she's going through something at this moment that's making her that way because I don't think that people do 180 degree switches in personality. What mm-hmm. we've seen in the flashbacks is she is a strong like leader of the group, mm-hmm. you know, very controlling over her friends, and at this point she is leaning so much on Hannah and you know, well, the other girls aren't calling her back. Right. They're keeping their distance. So Hannah's the only one who's letting her in in any sort of way. Mm-hmm. So she's really leaning on Hannah. And I don't know, because she's still lying about the story of what happened to her, mm-hmm. if it's something that something happened and that made her a more unstable, like emotional person, or if she's covering something up and using is a greater actress than we realize that Allie is, you know, putting on this huge front of like, I'm this emotional girl, I'm crying, I'm so upset about this, when actually she has something else going on. Could she simply just be grieving over her mother's death? Do you really think that she I that she could I don't think it's just about her mother. That I will say that. I think that there's something else going on. Mm-hmm. Is it the experience that she had while she was away? Because I, I, she had a tumultuous relationship with her mother, so we mm-hmm. don't feel like that's enough. I mean, I think anyone would be devastated over their mother's of death. Of course. But I'm not saying that at all. But there's something bigger. Mm-hmm. This girl is so strong that she, you would see her hiding or being alone and crying if it was just about her mother. Like, she would hide it from everyone that this is how sad she was and still try to be that strong person. And she's not doing a very good job of hiding her emotions. Right. And I find it interesting that Jason wasn't around. Yeah. Um, Jason has kind of been in and out, I feel like, mm-hmm. recently. He mm-hmm. comes in, swoops in. But not even in. there with his family for support, anything like that. Or we don't really see kind of what he's going through or I think it's we just, saw a bit of it last week and but it seems like that's kind of it like it's yeah. done yeah <laughs> it's it's just that's i mean i'm sure she could use unless there's somehow he's part of that whole situation or or part of Allie's disappearance or something like that that he's i hope not I know. I, everyone, so I used to be the person who came into this room and said, like, I really feel like that's a good character. That's the, I, I don't feel like they're doing anything that's, that's shady. And now mm-hmm. everyone is just, I, I question everyone. <laughs> People of Liars has made me question the world. Everyone has an ulterior motive. Yeah. Everyone does. Uh, and we've got a new we've got a new character that we met. Yeah, Sydney. Sydney. Last week we talked about on the show that mm-hmm. she was. We thought she knew too much. She was a little too in the know. She was brand new to the school and already, what's going on with Paige and and really invested in what was going on with Emily. And at first we we were saying, well, maybe she just admires her swim career because there was a scene last week with the trophies mm-hmm. and like, oh, maybe. Like, and there's this social media. Everybody puts their life out there. Maybe that, right. you know, she could get into so, the know that way. Right. And, but it's starting to feel like she still is really trying to get in the middle of Paige and Emily. And I don't know. I don't know if she just is wants to, you know, be... Do you think she likes Emily or she's just trying to be friendly or just wants to get into the group because there's so much attention on these girls and maybe that's what she's going for or do you think it's a romantic thing? I think that that was a question we definitely brought up last week Mm -hmm. about could it be a romantic thing and I don't necessarily think it I didn't really get that feeling from it today just watching them interact and stuff tonight and I feel like Paige and Emily are are still figuring out their stuff like I don't Mm -hmm. think that it's going to be about a third person trying to, like, get between them necessarily. But she, she there's something that she's not telling. Maybe her her parents are somehow involved. I said last week maybe in the police department. Mm-hmm. There, she knows too much. About what's going on. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And I 
hope that we kind of get to see more of her. And we mentioned that she was on Carrie Diaries, yes. the actress. So it's really hard to like break that up and be like, <laughs> oh, you're in a school hallway, but you're not from Carrie Diaries anymore. Okay, let's <laughs> let's learn your new character. <laughs> and Lucas, Lucas is Lucas is back, looking Whoa. looking so mature, so <laughs> much older. We've had him in studio, and when I looked up tonight, and he was facial like, hair. I was just like, wow, you look like an adult. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. So he wants to back out from Mona's little mob of her little gang of, of meanies. Mm-hmm. He's wanting to back out and he truly believes Allie's kidnapping story. And Mona's not having it and says that she has proof that she made it all up. Yeah, I mean, that's a crazy... I don't know even what to say about it. That Mona... Mona's just like so obsessed with her plan that she can't kind of see... No, she's lurking in corners and glaring at everybody. Right, and, see through the clouds. Yeah. It's kind of a, a weird place to be where I appreciated that Lucas came back and he was still questioning it. Mm-hmm. At the beginning of the episode, we see that he he's not sure if this is going to work and he wants to kind of take a step back. Yeah, and he goes to see Hannah and their interaction was a little awkward at the coffee shop. Well, yeah. I yeah. mean, he... He definitely, I thought it was funny that he was like, homeschooling didn't really work for me. I just needed to come back. <laughs> and looking, looking so old and mature. Yes, different. exactly. It's, it's been a bit, six months. <laughs> like, oh, uh, let's see what else. Um, so I don't know, but I, it's, he, seem, he seems to be kind of, always been kind of the nice guy, a little bit timid and, and all of that. I just, somebody's always kind of had a hold on him, whether it be Hannah, whether it was Allie, or whether it was Mona. And I, he does. I I want to see him kind of stand out and be his own person. I hope that's what happens. I didn't see that tonight. No. I mean, he's still very much enwrapped in mm-hmm. all of these A team, what have you, Mona's right. army, slash slash <laughs> slash. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. We'll see if he kind of steps out on his own and what side he ends up being on. Because it yeah. looks like he's gonna. Yeah. I mean, I think that. Um, he he has the potential of being a good guy, mm-hmm. but he is not um, he's not fully there yet. He he's starting to question what's I think he's always questioned what's going on around right. him. But we're seeing that more and more with him, and now he's coming back this grown up guy. So now would be the time. I want someone who's like a good guy to take him under his wing like I don't know I just feel like this guy's so lost well do we think Paige is a good guy I mean I know that's always that's been the question at the at least at the you know on this show for a while that you know kind of go back and forth with it a little bit and tonight she's attending those meetings but she still says she's out so yeah (laughs) I mean I'm starting to wonder if she's just like keeping a finger on what's happening at those meetings Mm -hmm. like She's not actually involved. And I know I go back and forth on this every week. I'm saying (laughs) something different. But um, I see your tweets. (laughs) 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 But that being said, tonight I'm going to say that I feel like she really wants to protect uh, these girls, especially Emily, of course. And maybe is just keeping a finger on it, wants to know what's going on but isn't actually part of doing something bad. What do you think? I think she just wants to be in control of something. And I think she wants to be in control of Emily. And we've kind of seen that aggressive part of her mm-hmm. a few times, trying to tell her what to do and to, and to control her relationship with Allie. And she kind of tries to control her relationship in all aspects, whether it be swimming, whether it was whatever. Like, she wants to control her in some in some form. So going to these meetings and keeping tabs on things, I don't really think it's for the greater good. I think it's just because she wants to know what's going on so she can try to manipulate the situation in her favor. I think it's coming from more of a selfish place than anything else. Like, of course, she doesn't want Emily hurt because then she's not around. She doesn't want Emily with Allison because then she's not around. So I just, I don't don't know. I'm I'm not 100% thinking she's a complete good guy. No, but do you think that she wants to do it because she's lost so much control in her life because Emily is in it because the A team is after them and like she's definitely had scary moments in their relationship where either Emily could be injured or you know 
there's been these moments across the season. Right, but she hasn't really been supportive. She's just been trying to dictate, if you notice. Right, no, I yeah. completely agree that she definitely has the controlling thing going on, mm-hmm. but I'm wondering if she's trying to just take back the control. Maybe. I, I mean, I, maybe. Yeah, because she feels so... I mean, I can't imagine being in a friendship, relationship, or anything with anybody that goes through half the things these girls go through. So, I I mean, I, it, I know it's not easy, so I don't, I don't blame her for what she's going through, but it's an interesting take on it because I don't really think it's a protective thing i think it's more of a controlling thing hmm. yeah i, I mean it is it's definitely a surveillance thing that yeah. i will say it's yeah. it's knowing what's going on being in the know because i feel like for a long time especially at the beginning of their relationship um a- emily and the girls were always together and Paige was always kind of circling on the outside or at Mm -hmm. least that's how she felt about it that she could never really get into that inner circle of these girls i feel like a lot of characters on the show are actually like that though yeah that that they can't get into this inner whatever these four girls have well and and i don't think that they ever will just considering the bond that they have with everything that they've been through i think it'll you know they'll come into the circle in different ways but it won't be it won't be the same, and maybe I think for a lot of them, those outside characters, they can't handle that. Yeah, I mean, Mona's the primary example of that mm-hmm. that I think of, that she's so incredibly... That's been, I feel like, her goal through all of this has been yeah. to be in that circle, and she really just wants to be popular or, or in with them. Well, I really do like the what Emily said to her when, you know, mm-hmm. has there come a point when you realize that you have become exactly the thing that you're afraid of, mm-hmm. which is so true. She's becoming ex- exactly what she's trying to get revenge upon or protect herself from mm-hmm. like she's exactly what ali was or yeah. is or whatever you want to call it she's yeah. exactly that so so scary that it's kind of watching in so many ways uh history repeating itself mm-hmm. uh, i mean i think that that's what happens in high schools though this is obviously an extreme version but, right but that it does like there's always the kid that the like it does tend to repeat right. itself and so you're seeing that like Queen B status taking something from Gossip Girl. Yeah. Um, <laughs> c- come over to Pretty Little Liars. I, I think it's funny that nobody, all these people say they want to protect each other and do all these things, but they, the message is all protecting with secrets and lies. Like nobody really goes out and, de- I mean, not that I know what they could do to really protect each other, but it just seems to, de- they just keep digging the hole deeper. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely this kind of thing of protect myself or protect, you know, the individual over the group. Mm -hmm. And that's causing that to happen, I think. That they're falling into larger holes because Arya is worried about Shauna and Emily is worried about, you know, they all have their things that Mm -hmm. Spencer is thinking about her dad, like, and rather than coming together and kind of putting it all out on the table. Yeah, well, let's talk about Arya and her obsession with Shauna and... She finds, uh, she's searching for Shauna, news about Shauna on the, the internet and finds actually a video of Shauna's funeral service. Which, I mean, can't even imagine how no. crazy that is for her to watch. No, and, and watches it repeatedly over and over and over. In the school, it looked like the school library? Well, the first time. Yeah. Yeah, the first, first time she sees it. Yeah. And she's is, watching it, and she hallucinates seeing her, like, get up out of the casket, which is creepy. So scary. <laughs> yeah, it was just like, and the look that Shauna yeah. gives in that uh, sequence is... I mean, and then, that, that, I mean, that's obviously such a traumatizing experience, you know, having going through something like that, and she really doesn't have anyone to really talk about it with, mm-hmm. aside from her friends and now Ezra, but... It's, I mean, how do you get over something like that? How do you deal with it? And now she's just obsessing about wanting Shauna's family to forgive her. Well, I mean, I completely understand that that's where you would go with that. Like, you would need some sort of closure, forgiveness there. But it was interesting that Ezra is still trying to support her. Like, last week we saw him say, like, what can I do for you? Like, really try to be there for her. Mm -hmm. And this week, He's still trying to... Like he's trying to take her mind off of it. He's trying right. to... He, they play board games together. <laughs> it was kind of that, like, season one Ezra and Arya. It was weird <laughs> to, like, go back there because it is, it's taken so many dark turns, there, mm-hmm. that relationship. Yeah. But I hope for their sake that, like, 
I don't know that she can find a way of getting that closure. I don't think she has at all, though. I mean, you still see her. Yeah. Well, I'm glad they didn't they didn't hook up. Because uh, I, I thought that, I mean, I, it looked like that's where it was going. And I'm glad that it didn't because she does need to deal with this in a real way and not hide it with, with something absolutely. else in there. And they still have to mend their relationship with everything that's happened between them. So I'm really glad that it didn't go there, even though it almost did. Yeah. I mean, that was the direction when he was like, oh, this is your favorite shirt. I was like, yeah. oh, no, we're falling down <laughs> a path again. guys. It's cool. Um, but it was nice to see her leave. And. I was proud of her, actually, for not going home, too. I thought that she was going to go home back to her house and have terrible nightmares and kind of really not deal with it in a healthy way. And she did at least go to Spencer's house and try to spend time with... With Spencer and her her creepy dad. Well, I don't know if that's so much better. You make a valid point. But, (laughs) you know, at least she wasn't alone. (laughs) This is true. This is true. All right. Well, let's get into... Let's go go back to Allie and her medical exam. Yeah, that was, so I thought when they were talking about a medical exam, and maybe I was just naive in this moment, was thinking more of a psychological test, and I know that they are going to do a psychological test, they mention it in mm-hmm. the scene, but it was interesting to me that they started with a true, like, physical examination of her, mm-hmm. um, and the doctor seemed really concerned about this other injury that wasn't mentioned in the police report. The scar on her thigh, a pretty big scar. Yeah, I mean, a deep, like, intense scar, for yeah. sure. And there's no way that she got that scar on a rock. No. A week ago. No, no way. That would be still a cut. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, you know, just, but it's it was interesting to me. And I felt that the doctor really didn't, push her too hard on it and she was already like tensing up about it because mm-hmm. it was just like oh it wasn't in the police report what happened here she was like it was a rock <laughs> yeah and you didn't get that sense of she was really trying to keep up these lies and you you know that she's not telling the truth at this point so well, i don't bigger. think that that that's going to be over so quickly i think they're going to come back to that and try to find out what's going on with that but even a little bit before she goes to the doctor just the moment between her and her dad i thought was really emotional and intense with having to go to that exam and him thinking that she was hurt in a different way. Yeah. And her reassuring him that it wasn't like that or at least letting him believe that it wasn't was a pretty intense scene, I think. I agree with you. I thought that also both actors were really, really strong in, in that, in that yeah, scene. Yeah, that was yeah, what just just watching the two of them interact and stuff. And he wants to just protect her and take her away from all of this. And she doesn't want to yeah. go. And I feel like her dad in a lot of ways is the most fatherly figure. I guess Arya's dad, who we haven't seen in a while now, yeah. um, is, is also pretty fatherly. But I felt like really like taking on that like protector role like I have this daughter back mm-hmm. my wife is deceased I'm g- I'm gonna protect her I'm gonna do what it takes mm-hmm. um but I don't know if that's gonna push Allie away it feels like that's where it's going that she's not gonna well I think he's making her kind of deal emotionally with whatever did really happen that she's not talking about because even when mm-hmm. Hannah confronts her about that scar she st- she know that she says you know when you know something you can't unknow it mm-hmm. and i think that is kind of one of the biggest themes for this and well for the whole series right is all about uh, secrets and what you know and what people are trying to find out and hide and, and all of that stuff that's 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 the big thing and yeah. i think her dad with with those moments and those intense moments are, is bringing out that emotion her making I, her deal with things she doesn't want to deal with yeah i mean i agree and i think it's so important that he do that because who else is going to right but ali i feel like she's the kind of girl who if he pushes her too hard like there's a line somewhere for her she'll just close back up she'll close back yeah. up or go away you, right. not i mean i don't mean run off again i mean just Spend more time with her friends. Find a way of not being around her dad if he pushes her too hard emotionally. Because we saw, even when the doctor was simply asking her pretty basic medical questions, like, what happened here? Mm-hmm. She was already starting to close up and and kind of, you know, right. and go to Hannah. And, and she recorded the entire session. Yeah. So the girls can memorize it so they can keep their story straight. 
<laughs> yeah, I was just like, wow, okay. Yeah. Like, taking it to another level. Yeah, definitely. Definitely doing that. And then Hannah. Hannah's shoplifting now. Is yeah, that how that she's dealing with her stress? She's got a new haircut, she's got a new hairdo, and now she's shoplifting. Well, I appreciated the fact in last week's episode that she was realizing that the identity she has isn't fully hers. And I like that people had pushed her to have this style and this look, and she wanted to find something that was hers. Mm -hmm. And I really thought that that was an interesting turn because it's something that happens in high school, and I felt like that was, like, a really nice storyline. And then to have her steal something (laughs) was a weird, like, twist on it that I wasn't sure I was okay with. Like... I guess that's how she's dealing with everything that's going on. Yeah, I mean, I understand she has a lot of stress and, you know, her mother and all of this going on, Mm -hmm. but... I she's, I she's rebelling. Yeah, I just was like, also her new clothing style is very conservative, and then what she stole is not conservative at all. Right. And so I was just like, where are you going to wear that to? I think that was my question, is why do you need this? If, if your new style is relatively conservative, what are you doing with this item that doesn't fit your new style. Is this who you really are? I don't think she knows yet. Well, I think that's the, that's the point. Is she's struggling. Yeah. She's struggling to figure out who she is because, you know, Mona turned her this way. Allie turns her that way. She, everybody's wanting her to be, at least in her mind, something else. So she's got to, you know, go back and figure out exactly who she is, I guess. Yeah, I think it'll be interesting, hopefully, in the next few episodes. Well, I mean, it obviously shouldn't take three weeks, but I hope (laughs) that it doesn't take the entire season to get there for her. I want her to kind of figure it out and, and, you know, have a confrontation with the other girls about the stealing. Like, I want someone to help her in some way. And I know that that's weird because she should be figuring it out on her own, but I feel like at this point she's so lost. I mean, everybody needs a a little help now and then, and, you know, going to... Her friends are too much drama right now. I think yeah. she she needs a new friend outside the circle. I think each one of them kind of do. And it's yeah. it's nice that Arya has Ezra to kind of break away a little bit. And, you know, Emily can hang out with Sydney to kind of get out of that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Spencer was hanging out with Andrew. Yeah. So that kind of gave, it breaks away from that. And I think, um, you know, Allie spending time with her dad, just kind of getting them into a different reality for a little bit, kind of to clear their their heads. Yeah. Is that, is good for them. That makes sense. Well me. I mean we'll we'll see where it all goes. It's crazy in Rosewood. I mean, I feel like this season, every week there's kind of been new questions and a few answers. Tonight we had a few answers and I'm hoping that with the what with the one hundredth uh, next <laughs> yes. week. Well it looks like Allie's getting her you know, she's getting her strength back. Yeah. She's going to come, Ooh. you know, she's going to come back nice and strong. Yeah, absolutely. So. I, I'm always excited, though. I feel like those are big episodes when you have those 100th. Mm-hmm. They tend to they tend to give some answers. Yeah. Well, we did see someone lurking in the bushes at Emily's when Paige went over there to warn her about hanging out with Allie. Yeah, that was a little creepy. <laughs> so I wonder. Super if, creepy. Yeah. So I wonder if it was somebody from Mona's army. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how Mona's army, I don't think we've seen it at full strength or full power yet. No, not at all. No, I mean, we just know kind of of its existence at this Mm -hmm. point. So I feel like that's kind of something that's going to play out throughout the season. Well, and I think that Allie looking online at that page dedicated to her with the mean comments and the nice ones is kind of pumping her up for how she's going to, the attitude that she's going to take with her back to school. I was going to say, yeah, it's going to either, she's going to know who her enemies are, she's Mm going to take it, kind of take names, if you will, (laughs) um, or she's, or it's just going to fuel her. You know what I mean? Oh, I definitely think she's taking notes and she's getting, yeah, you know, she's getting ready for that. So, 100. I know. Well, Spencer's mom is at a spa, apparently, since the police came back and she almost snapped. But a good thing good old dad was there to, to calm things down and send her somewhere. Yeah, I mean, I don't believe the spa story at all. Hmm. I don't know. Crazy. Well, I guess we'll find out sooner right? or later where she really ended up. But do you want to get into some news and gossip? Yeah, let's do that. All right. After Buzz TV News. What do you got? So Lucy Hale, uh, of course, is out promoting her new record, Mm -hmm. and she did an interview with Parade, uh, and she talks about 
who is most trustworthy on the show um, and who's the worst liar. And I thought Ooh. that this was a really fun question. So who do you think, um, actor, who is the worst liar out of, out of that cast? The one that plays Allie. <laughs> you think so? I think that's the worst one. No, I no. would say, it, she says, I don't know, but she says it's Ian, of course, who oh, plays Oh, well, that's Ezra. so obvious. I thought it was going to be somebody that was, like, less obvious. Yes, and also a fun fact about <laughs> Lucy Hale, in case you were curious. Um, they asked her in this interview, it's a bunch of random questions. You should definitely go to Parade.com and check it out. But which is your favorite Nestle Crunch Girl, um, Nestle Crunch Girl Scout candy bar? And it is a coconut and caramel. And I was just like, well, that's a random thing to ask, huh. but apparently okay. she likes coconut and caramel. Also, um, Ashley Benson has a new role. She'll be in the, a Sony film uh, starring Kevin James and Josh Gad, as well as Adam Sandler. So awesome. that's a big new role for her. And it's always exciting to see these girls step out of Pretty Little Liars world mm -hmm. and uh, go do a film. And I know she's been working on her film career. We've talked about Spring Breakers mm -hmm. on the show before as well. And um, it's going to be uh, the feature follows aliens uh, who misinterpret video feeds of classic arcade games as a declaration of war against them and attack Earth. So amazing. A big. <laughs> going to be like Galaga. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> big feature, fun, super exciting uh, role for her. And also, we have some, uh, I would say, sad news. Uh, it's reported, uh, Hollywood, uh, HollywoodLife.com is reporting that Lucy Hale and her boyfriend, who of course is a country singer named uh, Joel Krause, uh, have split. They say that the relationship, it was just a timing and distance issue, which of course is, I mean, she's usually the, the case. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm sure he's based in, I'm guessing, Nashville uh, or in the South with country she's music. Busy careers. Yeah, yeah, and she's got Pretty Little Liars here in L.A., so Aww. sad. I feel like that's always a tough one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, all right, are you ready for some predictions? Yes. And now, your After Buzz TV predictions. Okay, where do you think Spencer's mom really is? <laughs> Ooh. I don't, it's such a hard call. <laughs> I say she's in Radley. The dad's trying to hide her. I was going to say, can we, they all go to Radley? Is that an No, he probably off? sent her to London with Melissa. I was going to say, maybe <laughs> like with her other daughter or mm -hmm. um, maybe doing something to help protect the family. I, I don't know. Okay. It's, it's, it could be something. She's another one of those characters that, is in the gray zone for me. It's not black or white. I, I don't know if she's... Yeah. Okay. Any other predictions for next week? Mm, I'm really excited for the 100th. I think that um, it's going to be interesting to see how uh, Arya deals with all of this stuff with Shauna. I think that she's... It's going to come to a head for her. We've seen her be emotional towards it and really not handling it well at mm -hmm. all. And I, but I don't think we've seen her have that explosive moment that these characters tend to have when they're they're going through something like this. So maybe next week that'll be something okay. that comes down. What about you? All right. Well, I think Allie's going to come back big and bad, and it's going to be head to head with Mona as we see from mm -hmm. from the previews. But I think I think Mona's going to surprise. I think she's going to really kind of bring it, and it's going to be interesting to see those two kind of go at it. I was going to say battle it out. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm excited to kind of see that and see if Mona can really hold this mean girl attitude that she's trying to portray. Because I think deep down in there, she's really not that. She's kind of become her own worst enemy. And I wonder if that's going, if she's going to be able to continue to be that or if she's going to break down at some point. Yeah, I completely agree. I think that this season has been an ongoing thing of these characters losing their way in, in some mm -hmm. capacity. And it's interesting, by the end of the season, I hope that these girls kind of figure out who they are. And like Mona in a lot of ways, as, as a lost person. And, and yeah, it'll be interesting I mean, to see. She's High school is not easy. No, it's really not. Especially not in Rosewood. Absolutely. <laughs> you would think one of them would move by now. 
<laughs> Just saying. Wouldn't you? Maybe? No? No. Sometimes you can't get away from the drama. It's too much fun. I don't mm. know. I don't know. Social media would follow you. <laughs> Well, I think that's all we've got for tonight. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us here for another episode of Pretty Little Liars. Please make sure to go to iTunes, download, and rate our podcast. It is free. Um, tell us all your theories. We love to hear them. Go to YouTube as well. And follow us at After Buzz TV on all the social media channels. And you can follow me at Kelly with an IE 079. And you can follow me at Stephanie Wenger. And we will see you guys all again next week. Have a good one. Bye. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later. <laughs> <laughs>